Okay, Isn't like that, it but, fascinating, mm-hmm. fascinating, though, that nature figured out a way to stop everything from getting everything and just getting it <laughs> pregnant? Isn't it like nature's like, we got to have a, a system in here uh-huh. because that's just, that's untenable. Uh-huh. That's going to lead to chaos. Uh-huh. Yeah. Like if humans imagine, Can you imagine? if humans could get Thank other things pregnant, it is so good everything that they would be a hybrid of a human. Like that everything. Is, yeah, like be a, a lobster human hybrid. Some, but somebody a, would do that. You know? Island filled with turtle people. People walking around with exoskeletons going, hey, this ain't so bad. You're you going to be on the island going, I can't believe someone f- a turtle. Yeah. And there's going to be this guy like with a turtle shell on. Yeah. You know, he's going to be mad at you. Like, I'm just saying. Because people are insane. Insane. I mean, somebody has probably the turtle. One hundred percent, someone's the turtle, <laughs> right? If you had to bet everything you own, sure, one hundred percent. A guy yeah. somewhere yeah. has been hopped up on some fucking mm-hmm. yeah. Vietnamese street math, right. probably American, yeah, probably an American <laughs> guy from the Southwest. <laughs> Over there hiding from the law or something, right. and he's methed up and he's a turtle. Right. Yeah, people have everything. But no result because of the power, the nature has uh, made these protections, thankfully. The wildest uh, hybrid, of course, is the liger. Yeah. Because they, they miss the gene that regulates size. Yeah. They, they don't have the same gene that like a tiger and a lion does. I've seen those. I forget which one, how does it work? Is it a male lion and a female tiger or a male tiger and a female lion? I forget which one it is, but... In that combination, when they make a liger, they just keep growing. Yeah. <laughs> They're so big. Yeah, I've looked at these on the internet. These, I don't, I, you know, yeah. the, the thing is, is I guess, I guess a tiger and a lion and a donkey and a horse are close enough together in evolution to be able to, to uh, do this. And there's, yeah. I guess, no animal that is close enough to us to be able to Luckily, come close enough. Because, you know, they've done experiments or with maybe we just other haven't, primates. Maybe just nobody's fucked the right thing yet to figure it out. I bet someone just pulled it off in China or Russia or something like that. They probably got some chimp-human hybrid somewhere. I've heard sort of uh, internet conspiracy theories that there was a, a Russian uh, experiment that went awry or something like this. Well, but There was this one very strange case of a chimpanzee that they call humanzy. And this chimpanzee had very human-like <laughs> features and it lived with a family. Uh-huh. I forget if it was a family of researchers. I forget the story, but it, they always end tragically because those things ultimately, as they get older, they want to be the boss. Mm-hmm. It's a big male right. and they're going to just fuck you up. They're mm-hmm. going to bite your fingers off or bite your friend's finger. It's always something like that. They always do something horribly, mm-hmm. horribly violent mm-hmm. eventually. But this one that they had, they had him for a long time and he looked like a human. Yeah. Look, oh, it looked weird. Like yeah. he had, And he stood upright a lot and he wore clothes. He's got a big old donkey dick. Look at that donkey dick. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the Humanzy of Orange Park. First of all, Humanzy is such a great name. I mean, I almost yeah. wish it had worked just for that reason alone. Right. Humanzy. I mean, there'd be Humanzies going around. But, uh, yeah, I often kind of have See little... If you can find the, there's some weird shocking pictures of it. Like that one in the upper right-hand corner. The one... Yeah, right, that right there. And they're so strong. Click, click on that one. Look at its face. Yeah. Like it's got an odd face. Mm-hmm. And there's some pictures I think they're probably doctored that made it a little more human looking that could confuse people. But the thing, like, as it got older, see if you can find the older pictures of it. It looked real weird, man. Yeah. But it was just a chimp. It was just a chimp that, you know, had been taught to <laughs> behave that way. Yeah. Look at how he's walking. He's walking like a chimp. He's not walking like a human. Look at the shoulders and the arms. That's a chimp. But- I sometimes think about the close calls I've had with. A couple times with animals where I wasn't really giving them the, not like just understanding the power they had. Like I had a chimpanzee on a show I did once on on, on my TV show back in the day. And, you know, it was a, it was a trained chimpanzee, but massive. And, uh, you know, I remember after the show, I just said, hey, can I hang out with the chimpanzee? So it came out and I was just sitting out with in the parking lot for about half an hour, just me and this chimpanzee right in front of me, looking right in my eyes. It was playing with the buttons on my shirt. And, you know, was, the, the trainer was 20 feet away. And I just thought it was so the cutest thing. And then, you know, you, a few years later, I read about the chimpanzee ripping that, killing people and how yeah. violent they are. And you go, man, that is, you know... I had a I had a macaw at one point, which I actually had to get rid of a big red parrot, you know, a macaw, and I got it in uh, when it was thirteen months old, and this was my biggest disappointment, I'd say, with uh, a pet because I had gotten this macaw 
was named Rex. He was on the web show for a period of time. I was after you were on that time. But and I really love this thing, and I love animals, you know. And I, I, I was I was so fascinated by, by it because I was realizing, oh, this is this is a pet that I'm going to have for the rest of my life. And I was all dedicated to this, and I was really kind of somewhat moved by the fact that I was going to be having this beautiful macaw for the rest of my life. And it would, it would pick my teeth and it would stick its beak in my mouth and you know literally like just kind of put its plate and chew on my ear and all of this kind of stuff. And uh, then all of a sudden, uh, when it got to be about 13 years old, it just became a real asshole. Like it really, really changed. It had been going from this little baby to I couldn't put my hand in the cage without it really biting hard and I almost took my finger off. Uh, I had to go in the cage to clean the cage, and I couldn't pick it up anymore. And uh, I actually had to find it a new home. Uh, but Do you think it just didn't like being in a cage? I, I'm sure it didn't. I wouldn't like it like it myself. You know? And uh, and and uh, and that feels bad too. That's the thing I don't really like about yeah, having. You're a prison warden. Yeah, exactly. I started to feel really bad, so I took it back to the 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 bird place where I'd gotten it, and they said to me, "Oh yeah, we don't." It's been 13 years later. You know, I've been spe- I've been spending 75 bucks a month on walnuts for 13 years. You know, these eat a lot of walnuts. And then uh, they say, "Oh yeah, we don't sell macaws anymore because when they get to be 13, they 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 change and they become really really mean." I'm like, "Well, you could have told me that 13 years ago." But so I <laughs> <laughs> so it was like a, like there's an internal clock. Yeah, they just so they, it's like they, a puberty. They thing? like a puberty thing. Yeah. And so yeah. so I feel bad, but I got her a better home. That's why it's but, scary to be in front of a chimp. Because yeah. the the chimp. Exactly. They could just decide. I have I just these. Want to fuck this guy up. I have these moments where I think about the time when that macaw would have its beak in my mouth. Could you know, just your lips. months before it could have ripped my face apart. Sitting with that, but the the Fanny, the this mule, and I have the donkey as well, who was her companion for her, named Kia. She was a two year old donkey, and uh, they um, the donkey will live to be fifty potentially, oh. and uh, the Fanny is a big animal, so she could live to be 30, 35 years old, and so she's 10 now, so so it's a big responsibility, uh, and I, I really kind of consider them now, after having them just for a short time, kind of family, yeah. so it's an amazing thing, but they are, the thing that's, I think the thing that's most interesting about a mule, let me just kind of, we won't talk about mules for the whole show, but uh, you know, the they are so smart that they figure you out. So I'm new to this. So when I first got her, I was given one day of training on how to ride a horse. So I learned how to saddle her up. I learned how to get up on this thing. You know, you pull the rein, you look where you want to go, you push with your foot opposite of the, of the side you want to turn. There's a sort of a little rhythm to that. And it went great for about a month, but then she started sort of figuring out that I was sort of uncertain in what I was doing. Ooh. She started to understand that I didn't know what I was doing. And so she starts testing me, right? And I don't necessarily realize that's what's going on. 